Okay. Um, so welcome everyone to the Europe briefing. I'm sorry, I'm a little late and um, having some technical problems. Okay. Um, later on, the slides uh, will be available at, at this link up here and uh, the video briefing that we're conducting now, if you have friends that are missing, uh, unable to make it, uh, they can uh, join and watch the video from uh, this location. So it'll be a YouTube video. Okay, so uh, before we start, uh, there are a number of these decks that are uh, located on Google Slides, and we have a, a past PDF versions of this deck in um, on the internet uh, in Google Drive. So uh, just make sure when you um, are looking for this deck that you're referring to this deck, which is in gold highlights. Okay, so that's the one that's meant for uh, things uh, around this time period. Okay, uh, for AY. 2122 SEM2. Okay. And so uh, we're giving the briefing for students uh, thinking about joining Europe in August uh, of uh, the next term. So in semester one, uh, 22, uh, 23. Okay. So um, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Min. I'm an under, uh, undergraduate uh, officer. I'm a, also an associate professor here in SOC. And uh, for Europe, uh, we have Miss Ivy Ng, um, who is working uh, alongside Sue Ann uh, to administer uh, the Europe program. Okay, so uh, the briefing is only going to take about 20 to 30 minutes, and then you'll have time uh, until the end of the hour to ask any questions that you might have. Okay, so uh, let me first tell you what your op is about. Your op is basically a chance for you to do research, okay? Research one on one in computing uh, with a, a mentor, okay? So um, we have this also as an opportunity that uh, many people also do as a, a dissertation in their final year. But uh, we realize quite a number of you, especially those who are very talented and have a sufficient computing background or uh, understanding got uh, very good grades, uh, may be interested in graduate school or maybe just interested, okay, what is research anyways? And so uh, maybe you want to taste of that. So that's what your op is for. So uh, when we do research, it's actually following uh, what you may have learned already in secondary school or before, which is the scientific method, right? The scientific method says um, there, uh, you have a problem, uh, you try to formulate it as a hypothesis, you know, doing uh, something uh, differently may help uh, outcomes to be improved. Uh, and so you have a null hypothesis that you want to disprove. You do some type of experimentation to show that. Uh, that's one way of doing it in a, a sort of experimentation mode. But it could be a, a project doing research in other things like a theoretical computer science where you're trying to prove um, per particular properties of uh, certain classes of problems. Okay, All of these typically uh, require um, some type of problem formulation, okay? So you have to come up with the problem uh, uh, that you're trying to solve. Sometimes this will be given to you by your advisor, okay? The supervisor, the professor you're working one-on-one -on -one with. And in the first semester, you usually have to do some type of literature survey, okay? Like uh, make sure that uh, you understand how to do um, what other people have done in the uh, problem area before, and then um, try to propose uh, some method uh, of doing better, either theoretically or empirically or both. And then documenting that, uh, this is extremely important uh, so that other people can understand. Most importantly is your examiners, right? Because you're taking this as a module, there'll be another professor examining you and uh, you want to uh, impress them that uh, you understand what you're doing and uh, you've made progress on this uh, task, okay? So the prerequisites for Europe are actually very simple. Uh, you need to have um, 60 MCs already finished um, or in progress by this semester, okay, to apply for it. So for example, you're, you're uh, completed around 40 MCs and this semester you're taking almost 20, okay, and you expect uh, by May after getting uh, passing all of the courses you have 60 MCs, then you are allowed to apply for Europe. Okay, um, there is a minimum CAP, and uh, this isn't because of anything else. Like you don't need to be like extremely book smart to do um, research. Actually, it's not very well correlated 
with uh, your performance as an undergraduate student. It's mostly because we want to make sure that your coursework doesn't impede you from spending time on what we think of as an enrichment activity, okay? So, um, you know, uh, when you're already doing well, uh, SOC wants to give you the opportunity to excel, right? Do something uh, that distinguishes yourself. So that's what your office is for, okay? And then there's the, uh, just a rubber stamp approval from the CS and IS department. I serve that role. So all of your applications uh, go into a, a, a spreadsheet then uh, our officers check to see whether the information you've provided is correct, whether you actually have the minimum requirements that's up here, and then uh, we, we approve it. So it's just a human check to, to say that there's somebody responsible down the line for your application. Okay, so the timelines uh, for this uh, application are really simple. Uh, sorry, for the project, it's very simple. Basically, it's divided into two different semesters, okay? So um, there is a continuous uh, assessment, sorry, this should say semester one, okay, that happens uh, uh, at the first semester. So when you go starting from August until December or uh, November or so, uh, you will have your first semester. And in week 12 of the first semester, you will have a uh, continuous assessment report Okay, that goes to your main supervisor, the person helping you with the project, and an evaluator. Okay, and that evaluator stays the same person. Um, they will be the one grading you at the end of the second semester. Okay, so very simple. You have an interim report and a final report in the second semester. And those deadlines are always the same. It's basically towards the end of the semester, just in week 12. And then you actually um, do the presentation uh, in reading week. Okay, that, 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 that break time before uh, finals. Okay, there's one other thing that happens at the very end of your year up, which is that you have to write uh, sort of a dissertation or report. Um, and that usually comes uh, after you um, complete your final report in week 12. Uh, then if during the presentation, um, your examiner or your supervisor suggests changes, then you should uh, complete those changes before the first Monday after exams. That means um, right before the semester is officially concluded over. Okay, can you guys all hear properly? Uh, are there any questions that uh, you guys want to uh, ask? If you can hear all right, can you give me, uh, yeah, thanks for, for giving me the thumbs up. Okay, so uh, let me continue by talking about the evaluation structure. The evaluation for structure for Europe is very simple. It's basically 30% comes from your first semester, okay? And it's divided quite equally, okay? 15% to your supervisor, okay? Another 15% to your main evaluator, okay? So your project supervisor is hopefully uh, meeting with you on a regular basis, decided by a, um, you know some agreement between that person and you, okay? So maybe it would be on a weekly basis or monthly basis, whatever, okay? And uh, they will be grading you with the same criteria, okay? Basically, how well you understand the problem, um, how well you've done technically, um, and then how you're managing a long-term uh, project like Europe, which doesn't span a single semester, it spans two semesters, and then how well you're writing and reporting. Okay, actually, I, I would just emphasize this part is extremely important. Okay, being able to discuss and report your results well um, makes a very big difference on, uh, on your grades. Okay, then the final semester, uh, you know, uh, you basically do the bulk of the work then uh, is to make sure that you have uh, something uh, that pushes the state of the art in terms of boundary of understanding of some topic in computing. Okay, and then uh, there's a little bit more uh, differentiation on the metrics. So here we're talking about um, extension of knowledge. How far did you push the boundaries uh, in, in that particular project? And then uh, your technical achievement is broken down into this part, uh, methodology, implementation analysis, and the report is the same 20%, but there's uh, more marks allocated towards your initiative. Okay, for the first, half, we don't expect you to take a lot of initiative, but by the end of the first semester, you're usually close to an expert 
in a very narrow topic, okay? And that means that in the second semester, you and your professor can help push the boundary, okay? And, and uh, start to take initiative, okay? So that will be, again, split equally between uh, your supervisor and your main evaluator, okay? Um, this clause at the bottom, you don't have to worry so much about. Generally speaking, uh, almost, I, I ha have very rarely seen this exercised um, where the supervisor and the main agree, uh, evaluator don't agree, okay? Um, but usually everyone says, uh, you know, the student is doing fine, um, they can continue with the project. So that means they will receive an IP grade, an in-progress grade for their CA semester. And then at the end of the entire um, Europe, uh, we take a balance between the 30 and 70%, get a letter grade, and that letter grade is reflected for both semesters. So your IP grade would change back to your letter grade, let's say you get an A, okay, then the IP grade in your um, subsequent transcripts will be reflected as an A for the first semester as well as the second terminal semester. Okay, so that's how it goes. Uh, uh, the schedule is very simple. You basically have about a month uh, or more than that to uh, find a particular Europe project. Okay, there is an application online form. Okay, I'll show you that here. Okay, uh, where you just have to fill out this form. Okay, it'll be uh, circulated as part of the deck. Okay, uh, where you just fill in the field. So um, you're applying to start in academic year 2022. Okay, so it'll be 22. And then uh, the second semester, second semester is 10. So you were write 2210. Okay, that's the, the thing you would write here. Okay, so we'll update this later on. Okay, you type in your name. Okay, your student number. Okay, uh, your handful number. Okay. And then uh, one of your programs, okay, and, and your year of study. Most people will be either in year two or year three, okay? If you happen to be a USP student, um, the Europe satisfies your independent study module, okay? It's uh, uh, basically a requirement for the USP program. So uh, you do need to check this off so that our administrators know that you are using it to fulfill your ISM uh, requirements. If, you're, if it doesn't reply, uh, apply to you, just check no. Okay, uh, if you have uh, a past area that you've done research in, for example, in your H3, if you're coming from A levels, or you've done internships in CS related fields or IS related fields, then please put that here. If you have uh, uh, any awards, for example, in uh, Math Olympiad or Science Olympiad, you can also let us know. Okay, um, again, we look for the number of uh, modules that you've currently passed. So maybe you've done 40 in your first year, and then the number of modular credits you're taking this semester, maybe like 18, maybe I have some um, other credits from before, uh, and then uh, that would satisfy these have to add up to 60. Okay, these two fields, at least 60. Okay, and then uh, for CAP, you just fill it in here, it just has to be greater than 3.8. Okay, uh, and then we will consider you. Okay, so you can get an uh, unofficial transcript from the registrar. Uh, just make sure that it's in uh, usually PDF format and then you can upload that. Okay, so attach that file. And then uh, I think that is mostly uh, what we'll need. There is another uh, part of the form where you need to tell us which person uh, you've discussed with and who, whose project you want to join. So for that, you need to browse the projects uh, and talk to supervisors. So uh, we'll come back to that uh, right now, okay? So uh, you need to do this process within uh, roughly this month by April 14th or so, okay? Now, um, that's just the application process, but you know, you, we have to decide what type of research you're actually doing, okay? So the important thing here is to find a suitable project for you, okay? And um, actually, uh, even though we have a Europe list, okay, um, the important thing here is to look at all the different types of projects that are available. So if you go into the project administration system, which is at this URL, uh, you'll see a different page from me because I have a faculty version of the page. But basically there will be different types of projects, FYP projects and Europe projects, okay? And, and actually you should inspect both 
Don't just say, oh, I'm looking for Europe. So only Europe proposals make sense for me, okay? And I'll tell you the reason why, okay? Because even though we have Europe projects, there are not so many of them, okay? It doesn't mean that there are no projects available. It just means that uh, uh, faculty are not required to put up Europe projects. So if they're listing some, that means they're really interested in hosting. Okay, but oftentimes, especially uh, professors who do a lot of teaching or have a lot of research, they may not have proposed a project. Okay, but they are required to put up projects for FYP. Okay, so if you look at the FYP list, it's a bit longer. There's a, a, a couple more pages of this and we try very hard to get enough FYPs for fourth year students. Okay, so what you can do is scan both. Okay, scan both projects. Okay, see what types of uh, titles strike your fancy. Okay, and then um, look at the names. Okay, like uh, for example, there is a events management system, there is a exam typesetting system, there is a explainable AI in medicine. So maybe, oh, that looks interesting. Maybe what I want to do is browse uh, what Brian Lim does. Okay, so I'll, I'll just put his name into Google and then uh, see what, what type of things he's doing, okay? So uh, you can see he's uh, done things in ubiquitous computing, okay? Human-centric uh, uh, computer interaction, okay? AI-driven technologies to address societal health uh, uh, challenges in healthcare or wellness. So if that's something that's interesting to you, and you have some idea like, oh, I did an orbital project or, you know, in in a, a secondary school, I did a project on that. I would really like to further it under under this type of project. Then uh, even though Brian doesn't have a particular project that might be specifically uh, about uh, that uh, thing. OK, then uh, maybe you you can uh, talk to him. OK, so uh, you can go again to his page find his email address and, and write an email. Dear Prof Lim, uh, I was looking at your page. Um, you know, I'm a potential Europe student. Uh, I really like this project. Uh, I, you know, could I uh, interview you? Or maybe, for example, um, I'm, I'm interested in a, an area in general, but I don't have a specific project in mind. Um, would you consider, you know, uh, talking to me so we could find an appropriate um, a scope for a project, okay? So you can do that uh, using this list. So there are different numbers of, of people doing uh, different areas. Um, so that's uh, a good way to start your, your journey there. Okay. So um, talk with any faculty whose project is of interest to you, okay? That's really important, okay? Because um, Europe is an 8MC module. Uh, it spans four MCs each semester. So it's actually a fairly large chunk of MCs that uh, go into your CAP, okay? If you get a, a good match and you work well with that individual and their team, then it's really beneficial to you, okay? But on the other hand, if there is a better match um, than what you end up getting, um, then you have some opportunity cost, right? You could have done a better project, uh, more related to what you wanted, but because um, you know you didn't shop up, uh, shop around as much, you got the project that you did. Okay, so um, it's really in your best interest to spend some time. Okay, I'd say maybe a, a whole day. Okay, or at least half a day doing research. Try to shortlist about uh, five to seven professors okay, who are doing work in a particular area, and then uh, write them all emails, okay? Um, some of them will reply, some of them won't, okay? And if they don't reply, never mind, because you uh, cast a wider net, maybe it's easier to get uh, interviews with other people, okay? So cast a wide net, talk to any faculty whose interests might match yours, okay? And then, um, as I said, look through projects, both FYP and Europe, and then use that as a way of finding out your own ideas. Okay, now you can also propose your own project. If you do that, there is this form which you can click on from the slides that we'll uh, uh, give you later, all right? Where you can just propose your own project, okay? Proposed by me, uh, my student matrix number and the description of the project that I want to do, okay? Um, and then uh, I have to go find a supervisor for that, okay? So I need to go 
again back to uh, the applications here and see whether there's anyone who wrote self-proposed projects, okay? So right now there's none, but maybe what you can do is again, try to find faculty who are in the general area uh, of uh, things that you're interested in, okay? And uh, maybe you can propose to them when you're interviewing them. Is it okay if I have an idea for a project? Would you be willing to supervise me? Because I already have some some idea of what I want to do because I've had some prior uh, ideas in this area, okay? And they may or may not uh, support you for that, okay? But it's a, it's a good idea um, if you already have some uh, thoughts about what you want to do, okay? All right. So uh, like I said here, the bottom line is you need to really take the initiative, okay? If you uh, can't do the shopping and initiative now, there's very little likelihood that you're going to really do well for Europe because Europe requires a lot of self-discipline, a lot of self-initiation uh, and uh, initiative to do um, a good job because uh, your professors are not going to hound you for progress, okay? It's not like uh, a module where there's homework assignments and there are specific deadlines uh, part of the way in, right? You've already seen the deliverables. Basically, every semester, you only have one deliverable at the end of the year. It's like taking a course that only has a final project or final uh, exam component. It's a little scary, right? Um, and because of that, if you're not well disciplined, it can be hard because um, you know you may suck up all of your time doing homework assignments or module uh, projects for other modules, and you won't have reserved enough time to do your year up. Okay, so make sure um, you you take the initiative now. Okay, and then work with your mentor to plan out your project, even though there's only the intermediate report at the end of the semester or your final report. Work with them to engineer. Um, you know, deadlines in the middle, like, okay, I want to complete the literature review by this time, I want to read enough papers to propose a, a solution by this time, okay, so structure the project yourself. I think many of you know how to do this already, haven't taken uh, some project modules at this point. Okay, so uh, I've uh, just put some of, of the sample projects that are in um, the uh, my project uh, admin system. So um, there are uh, ones of all types, like uh, uh, Chen Chiyong is a database professor. So he's looking at uh, supporting cardinality constraints. Chang Yi Chen heads our security, information security lab. So there's a lot of things uh, talking about cybersecurity. And, uh, and lately there's a lot of talk about using uh, machine learning to do things. So uh, when you have machine learning, you also have to think of it from a security standpoint. So adversarial machine learning is uh, of course interesting to that. Uh, we have people doing algorithms. So uh, Tarka is working in the algorithms uh, field. So many of you who took, let's say, um, uh, the data structures and algorithms, if you found that a fascinating class and you want to do more fundamental work in theory and algorithms, you might want to talk to him. Okay. Um, there are uh, a number of other people like uh, Nan Bojan. He does a lot of gaming work. So you can see a lot of his projects uh, uh, revolve around games. And some of them are, are joint projects. They're, they collaborate with Ubisoft or other people uh, outside of um, SOC to get the projects uh, done. Okay. Uh, Brian Hui uh, also works in uh, the AI area, machine learning area, especially for uh, things like. Um, uh, uncertainty uh, in AI. So uh, one of the things there is, let's say, anomaly detection where uh, you're not given a supervised signal. So um, this type of unsupervised machine learning is of interest to him. All right, so I, I told you to scan the FYP. And in fact, uh, earlier I showed you the FYP listing. And uh, just now we saw some from the Europe program. Um, but you may be wondering, okay, uh, fourth year students have to do an FYP. Well, some of them may, okay. But uh, what's the difference uh, between FYP and Europe? So this is the exact same email that you see on your screen that we tell our faculty, because some of our faculty are new. They've only been here for a couple of years and they also don't know, okay, what can I expect from a Europe student? What can I expect from FYP? Okay, the clearest difference is in modular credit. So FYP is 12 MC. So it's four MCs more, okay? Europe, on the other hand, is only eight MCs, but there is a CAP requirement that's much higher, okay? So you need 3.8 to do that, 
okay? Um, and because typically Europe students are in their third year, okay, they have a lot of courses to complete. So it's not unusual for Europe students to be taking um, 21 or 18 modular credits um, inclusive of Europe, okay? And the last part that's very important is that you're expected to work the full year. This is really important because many of you will ask, okay, can I do an internship over the summer, okay? Um, even though I want to take Europe, okay? So the answer is conditionally yes, okay? By right, no, okay? Because Europe is supposed to be a full year program. That means you must make time during the summer to do your project, okay? It doesn't have to be full time. So, uh, even though you're doing your summer internship or you have a part-time job or something like that, we still require you over the summer and your winter breaks to schedule time to make progress in your job, okay? It's, uh, research is not the type of thing where you can just cram, you know, study for half an hour or, or, or two days and then good, good results, okay? It really requires regimented work, um, very regular uh, in order to make good progress uh, because you know, sometimes you read new papers, you have to wait it, wait for a while for it to uh, absorb in, and then you can talk with others about it. And that just takes time, okay? For FYP, it's a little different. This is because FYP is not necessarily research. So when you look at the course list, uh, sort of the project listing, uh, you may find some projects that are interesting, but not quite suited for Europe because they don't seem to have a research component. Okay, if that's the case, then you can think, okay, I'm interested in this. Um, how can I make it research related, you know? Um, and I, I want to discuss with the professor about how uh, that could be, you know, I, I don't want an implementation project. I want it to be something uh, more deep, you know, something that doesn't just involve implementation or a study, but it's really furthering knowledge, okay? Then uh, you can talk with them and say, okay, I like this FYP, but how, how can I permit it in such a way that it becomes a research project, okay? So like we say uh, on this slide, uh, Europe students usually are, are um, doing it for enrichment. They're usually more driven than FYP students. So um, it's also a way of practicing research so that when they come to FYP in their fourth year, they can do research again, okay? So there are a number of students who do Europe and then they return uh, back to the same supervisor or back to a different supervisor, uh, and they learn everything that their uh, research skills in Europe, and they apply it to an FYP. So that's also very good, okay? It means in some cases, let's say you want to apply for graduate school, that you have two different professors who've worked for you an entire year and have observed how you handle the uh, um, the responsibility of doing research, and they can uh, all write recommendation letters for you. Okay, let's see. Okay, um, uh, we have a note from our uh, administrator just to make it clear that uh, for FYP, students need a CAP of at least 4.0 before they can replace their industrial requirement. So there's also an industrial requirement uh, for some students, okay, uh, for uh, replacing that with FYP. Okay, furthermore, um, uh, there is a requirement that your uh, CAP be at least 4.5 uh, if you want to aim for highest distinction, they'll need, you'll need to pass your FYP, okay? So uh, these are usually not too much of a problem, but just, just to make that uh, clear to you. Okay, thanks Pam for that. Okay, um, the other thing that we want to let you know is that there's actually budget uh, from the school to help you with your project, okay? Uh, most students don't use this, but it's good to let you know early on, okay? Um, when you have, for example, some small hardware, for example, Internet of Things, you need to buy uh, some type of uh, hardware device, a Raspberry Pi, or uh, for example, if you need to execute some uh, evaluation study, using human subjects, like you want them to evaluate whether the results are good or bad or something like this, you can use up to $200 uh, to reimburse uh, for your project. That is done for your supervisor, 
Okay, so um, they uh, you can um, apply for this reimbursement for your supervisor, so your supervisor can incur the cost. Then they will reclaim it from the undergraduate office. Okay, in certain cases, if a supervisor has multiple projects that are all similar, they can uh, bunch all of the receipts together to claim more than two hundred dollars worth of reimbursements for uh, projects. Okay. So um, the final part is just testimonials. Uh, what have you learned from your, from, uh, your seniors? So uh, Nevin says uh, in his particular year, which was nominated uh, for uh, 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 Outstanding Undergraduate Award, which happens at the university level, that it taught him a, a lot of uh, about information theory and statistics. Okay, so he was doing a theoretical uh, year, okay. Um, I think Kwang Yan also uh, adds to that to say, you know, you really have to have a good sense of how to do research, you know, how to look for related work, um, how to organize your thoughts into what needs to be done, what's nice to have, but not necessary, and what's absolutely necessary to show, um, as well as time management, right? Like I said, it's a, a project that happens over the entire course of the year, okay? Uh, I've learned how to formulate my research topic um, and work towards a publication. So especially if you're uh, interested in going on to graduate school, um, you can tell your prospective Europe supervisor if you know already, you know, I, I'm really clear that I want to go to graduate school. So uh, I'm wondering how, how likely is this project uh, in your own estimation to lead to a publication, okay? And uh, the last one from... Uh, Feng Yuan says, you know, being directed to resources and even experts on the topic. So that is something we uh, definitely uh, want you to connect with is like after you start reading these papers, because SLC faculty are also among the elite in the world, they can put you in touch with uh, well known professors at MIT at Stanford and other people who wrote the principal papers that you may be citing or may be trying to build on. And then that is a good way of uh, doing collaboration or learning learning about how research is at the global scale. Okay, so some tips. Uh, I think uh, Kwan Yan says, you know, make sure you find a topic that you like. So that sort of reinforces what I told you earlier that we really need to do at this period now in March, make it a direct point, put it on your schedule, okay? If you want to start today, do it today. Uh, I mean, no better time, right? Um, to shortlist professors that you might want to talk to. Okay, uh, Zijin, who happened to be my student, said, you know, time and workload management is really important. Okay, I will just share one secret with you is that, um, you know, the semesters happen to look uh, from an availability point like an inverted triangle. Okay, at the beginning of every semester, you really have a lot of time. You're shopping for classes and things like that. And so you want to actually spend the bulk of your time at the beginning of the semester working on your Europe. Okay, in both semester one and semester two. Around this time, which is right after a semester break, right? Um, and you, you now have a lot of projects, a lot of assignments, and you know, this uh, Europe briefing, it gets very busy. So your availability will be a lot less. And so even though you would like to work on your Europe because of all the other project deadlines, midterms, uh, assignments, and tests, you'll have very little time to do that. Okay, so if you've planned your manage, time management properly, you will already know ahead of time, actually the you know, week 10 through week 13, I'm pretty much unavailable to do any research. Okay, it's just not going to happen. So if I expect this and I plan for this, then I, I won't sabotage myself later on, okay? Okay, and uh, some quotes, uh, Trevor, uh, who's one of the uh, professors offering quite a lot of Europe projects said, uh, you know, uh, he has a very good team. He treats them as part of his team. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, as a Europe student, you get to work with graduate students uh, who you might want to become later, postgraduates, uh, uh, postdoctoral students who've already finished their PhD, uh, as well as with him in order to uh, build up your knowledge, okay? So he's really interested in, in shepherding uh, students who are beginning in their research, okay? And uh, he says, uh, together, he's been very impressed with the work that students can accomplish given enough supervision. 
Okay, Yi Ding, who happens to be a Europe, uh, was a Europe student last year in my group, um, wrote this comment that says uh, she didn't know anything about recommendations uh, ahead of time, but uh, after uh, spending a, a couple months self-studying that, she learned how to do this uh, um, uh, very important type of technology well, and she carried out uh, some independent research in my group, okay? So Gabriel, who's uh, uh, working with Wei Sang, he's uh, working in uh, networks work. Uh, so uh, when you look at computer networks and, and um, how you know packets get driven and, and uh, move around for you know multimedia workloads or text workloads, um, that's uh, his area of expertise. And Gabriel said uh, it really helped him uh, understand the, the uh, deeper theoretical implications of, of computer science work. Okay, so uh, again, he says he highly recommends this program for exploring fundamentals and uh, students who, who feel that SOC is just a little too easy. You know, the, the courses are, are pretty uh, piece of cake. Okay, Kwan Yan, who was uh, featured in some of the quotes earlier, he said, um, you know, it's basically a chance to audition what it's like to be a PhD student. Okay, and then I think he, he's uh, gone on to become a PhD student, not in Singapore, but elsewhere. Um, so it's a, a good chance. If you, if you didn't know whether you, you want to go to industry uh, and you're thinking maybe academia is for you, you don't mind um, going for permanent head damage, which is what the nickname of a PhD is, um, then maybe you can consider doing Europe. You know, it's a low cost, you know, only eight MCs, uh, a way of auditioning what it's like to do independent research. Okay, um, uh, this is the last one, I think, uh, from uh, Huang. So he, he did his job quite a bit a uh, long time ago, over seven years ago. And uh, again, I think he, he did very useful work. His work actually won the Outstanding Undergraduate Researcher Prize, which is a university level award for his type of research. And he worked with uh, one of our machine learning experts, Brian Lowe, who works on Bayesian uh, methods. Okay, there are uh, a couple of FAQ and issues. I'm not gonna talk about these very much. You can take a look at this if you want. They'll be in the slide deck that we uh, that you can go to, okay? Um, and that will help you uh, go through um, the details. Okay, so um, there's a couple questions that usually come up, okay? One is that um, if I want to try doing research, but I'm not sure what I'm committed to doing it for a whole year. Um, what can I do, okay? One thing you can try is doing CP3106, which is like Europe, but it doesn't carry the burden of having, having an independent examiner, okay? This one is just a single semester, um, and then uh, you can apply for this directly with the Prof. They don't have to propose a project. They just need to accept you for an independent project. And you'll write up a, a short report to say uh, what it is you're going to do and how you're going to be evaluated. We, we receive that in our office and then we either approve it or ask questions about um, uh, what, what exactly the application is for. Okay, so if you're keen on um, trying it out, but you're not sure for a whole year, you can talk with a pr prospective professor and say, I want to try it. Can we start with CP3106? Okay, and this makes a, a little bit more sense for people in their, um, maybe at coming at the end of their first year, okay? Because they can do Europe at the, be uh, at the, be at the middle of second uh, year, okay? So for example, second year, first semester, you may take CP3106, and then they say, oh, actually it's quite fun. I quite enjoy the challenge. I want to now do a Europe for an entire year. Then you can start in SEM two of year two, okay? And then do it for a whole year uh, from SEM two uh, all the way to SEM, uh, end of SEM one in year, year three, okay? So that you would finish in December, okay? Now, uh, again, Europe is for Con, uh, consecutive semesters, okay? So if you plan to go for NOC, SEP, by right, you cannot do that, okay? You have to be full-time here in SOC. So if you're planning to do exchange, uh, you may want to postpone your consideration of Europe until after you've completed your SEP 
and your NOC, okay? So you have to be here full time for your op, okay? Uh, in order to do this. All right, so um, those are uh, the basic things that I, I wanted to tell you about this. So uh, again, just to remind you, uh, applications roughly close around April 14th. Uh, we know that uh, students sometimes want to, are not quite sure they want to clear their exams, okay? Uh, we can accept late applications, but not too late. Uh, so the important part is make sure you get a good match, okay? Do spend the time really diligently uh, talking to your seniors who are in Europe, talking to uh, friends uh, who may be two years more advanced than you who are doing FYP now. Um, you can look on the internet. There's plenty of, uh, you know, NUS whispers and other sites to tell you about um, what, what people felt about doing Europe under a certain prof. OK, um, and, uh, you know, use that as a way of figuring out which type of area and which professor you might want to work with. OK. All right, so um, that is all that I wanted to share with you. I'll just uh, uh, briefly uh, unshare my screen. OK, and I, I'd love to hear from any of you who have any questions. You can type them in chat if you want, or uh, you can just go ahead and uh, unmute and ask questions. OK, uh, otherwise, what I'll do is um, maybe after a short pause, uh, I'll tell you about a little bit more about how I think you can go look for uh, prospective supervisors. Um, hi, Prof. Uh, thanks for sharing. So uh, once we have found a supervisor and an area of research to work on, do we need to like action or anything? Like, Do we need to email somebody to sort of formalize that arrangement or will it all be done at the back end? Okay, how it works is that after you've talked to them and they say, yeah, I accept you as a Europe student, okay? Then they can send you a short email to that effect. Like uh, when they confirm with you, they usually email you back, right? And then when you go to the form that I showed earlier, um, the one that's in the Microsoft Office forms, right? Um, in this next page that you have to go on the form, which I didn't click through, uh, you will have to say which project, which uh, uh, project title, project ID, okay? And then you have to attach some uh, proof, um, and it can just be a screenshot of your email uh, that you have with them, okay? And that will be sufficient, okay? If we're, we question it, then we'll just check with the prospective supervisor, okay? But otherwise, you're, you're already on board as soon as they say, okay, um, I'm taking you, then that's it. You don't need to do anything else. Okay, that's your question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Jai Zhang asks, uh, uh, when we can take project under a different faculty under FASS or science? Uh, and the answer is you could, but then you'd be subject to their modules, okay? It wouldn't count for us, right? If you want to take Europe with us, then uh, you have to be subject to our rules, okay? So if you want to take Europe under another uh, faculty, that's something you can negotiate with them. OK, um, generally speaking, Europe, as it uh, fulfills requirements within computer science or in DISA, has to be with SOC. If you find that there's a good topic in another science, uh, in another faculty, what you can do is talk to that uh, professor and then have them talk to maybe a professor that you know in SOC that also might be interested in that topic. OK, and then uh, they might say, OK, maybe we can join forces. Maybe we can have a joint project that's hosted here in SOC by, you know, myself. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll um, co-advise on this project, maybe with engineering or maybe with uh, CHS or something like that. OK, that is possible. It's rare, uh, but it is possible. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Other questions that you have? Please ask because, uh, you know, that, that's the whole point is getting your uh, questions answered. So I'll wait for another minute or so, and then I, I will talk a little bit about how, how you can further um, find out the professors that you might want to work with. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I have another question. So just now in the slides, I saw that uh, you could potentially turn the Europe into a FYP as well. So would that count as, okay, so my first question is, would that count for both Europe and FYP in a sense of 20 MCs? And if that's possible, like how can we possibly go about doing that? Okay, let me share my screen. I, I shared the wrong thing just now. Okay, so it's not that you can convert uh, Europe to FYP. What we really mean is that uh, uh, FYP and Europe are, uh, can be viewed as two different stages, okay? Where you can do Europe is as a way of trying out research. And then if you like it, continue doing research in your FYP, okay? So it's not that they're the same thing. You would do the Europe first, let's say in your year three, and then uh, you would do your FYP in year four, okay? Sometimes the projects can be exactly the same, like you do the first half in Europe, and then you do the second half in FYP, okay? Many, many science projects are like that. Like you solve one problem and it says, oh, you know, we found a solution, but there's so many unexplored things even about this solution that are not good enough and that's worth investigating. So I want to do further research and I'm gonna do that for FYP. So Yi Ding, uh, one of the uh, quotes from her is exactly that. She actually worked um, on her Europe on recommendation systems and we solved it, uh, but we, there was more work to do. So she continued to do FYP in my group, okay? So it's not to say that you can convert a Europe into an FYP, but if you continue to do the same research with the same professor, or um, you may uh, incur actually 20 MCs, like you said, eight from Europe, 12 from FYP, all working on the same area. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for asking. Uh, hi, Prof. Um, thanks for the sharing. Um, as a follow-up to maybe Joel's question just now. Yeah. Um, in this case, would it be, um, I guess for lack of a better word, would it be more helpful if like when we are looking for a prof to apply for Europe to um, let the prof know that we're interested in doing an FYP, maybe towards the same area or just an FYP related to research in general. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's always helpful for professors to know a little bit more about you um, when they're considering uh, whether to take you on board or not. Generally speaking, uh, professors are interested more in students who are committed, right? So if you say, well, I really think research is the right thing for me. You know, I, I just want to make sure of that by taking a Europe. And I'm committed to doing FYP because actually I want to go to graduate school in the US or, you know, in China or wherever, okay? Um, then uh, they will take that into consideration uh, and maybe uh, they'll say, well, this project that you've chosen actually doesn't quite work for uh, FYP as well because it's sort of terminal. So uh, maybe you can consider this other type of project, which is a little bit more open-ended. Okay. I see. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. And um, again, uh, Research is something that you need time to invest in. This is why having Europe for a whole year is really much more beneficial than doing a single semester project. With a single semester, usually the most you can do is you can learn about an area, sort of like taking a module, but on your own pace, like doing Coursera or edX, okay? But to mm -hmm. actually contribute to research in an area means you have to sort of understand that prior knowledge and then uh, you know, push the boundary a little more. Okay, so that requires at least two semesters, but you can understand if you have, say, a two years, right, then what you can say is, well, I got the first six months out of the way, then I know this area, and then I contribute to it uh, for the second half of Europe, and I can continue to contribute to it for uh, another year. So in fact, uh, all of this prior knowledge that you're learning in your first six months is sort of amortized. You know, that cost, it, it's the sunk cost of learning an area. You're, you're, you're using that and investing very heavily for all one and a half years later, okay? And then if that happens to be the research area that you really like, then you really have a good foundation, for example, to do a master's or a PhD in that particular area, whether it be algorithms, database, uh, networks, uh, theory, or uh, AI. I see. Thank you, Ralph. Okay, hey, great questions. I, I'm really pleased to hear from some of you. Uh, other questions that you have? Let's see, there's some more on chat. So I just pulled them up. Um, Celine asks, uh, I wonder whether we can do ATAP and Europe concurrently. So uh, the problem with ATAP is, uh, again, it is uh, 
you're, you're not actually on campus uh, during ACTAP, so uh, you, you cannot do it uh, concurrently. So it, you, it's considered like SIP, um, so it's, you're, you're not a full-time student uh, during that time. So just like SEP, just like NOC, our advice to you is to do ATAP before or after you do your op, okay? Uh, and, and not try to do them com combined because when you're doing uh, any type of internship or attachment, you know, putting on my other hat and thinking about, you know, how to get your best job offer or how to get your best graduate school application out. You really want to devote as much time to get really excellent results, right? That people are like clamoring, okay, we got to have this person back because she did such an excellent job or he did, you know, implemented this entire system that uh, I I'm willing to give them a job offer, okay? If you have to juggle between ATAP and Europe, that's much less likely to happen because your concentration is diffuse, okay? And uh, hopefully that answers your question, Selin. Um, for Tan Wei En, you asked about uh, uh, starting in the middle of the academic year. Yes, that is definitely possible. You can start, uh, and we have another briefing exactly of this sort um, in October, okay? So right after recess break in SEM 1, I hold the same briefing and then uh, you don't have, obviously you don't have to come to that one, but if you're not sure, again, you can come and ask again and you can start in SEM 2 of that year and do the Europe again contiguously, meaning that you start in January and you end in December. And during the summer months, you're still obligated to do some work on Europe, okay? Does that make sense to you, Wei An? Okay, other questions? I love questions. So uh, I really, uh, I'm very happy to hear that you, you guys are um, uh, got good clarifications. Okay, so Gabriel asked January to December and what's the other Europe uh, window? It's the one that you're currently attending the briefing for. So if you're applying right now for Europe uh, starting again, um, let's see, let me, uh, can I go back to my slides? Okay, uh, you're applying in March, okay? You have until April to do so. That means in August, you are officially starting Europe. Okay, so that means SEM 1, August to April, SEM 2. Okay, that window of time is when you're taking your Europe, SEM 1 and SEM 2, and the winter break in between, you have to work on Europe, okay? My take on this is that because you do, if you uh, apply this graph, batch, okay, and you want to start, okay, in August, actually, you can get a lot done during the summer, okay? So even though you're not officially taking Europe until August, I advise my students, even though they want to take internships uh, and things like that, do yourself a favor, spend part of your time during the summer working on your Europe, okay? This is critically important because you can understand during the semester, like I told you earlier, that the second half of the semester, basically week eight, which is right now, right? Week seven or so, uh, until week 14, you guys are really busy, okay? And it's very hard to put extracurricular uh, uh, enrichment activities like Europe into that. So what happens is that those two semesters, SEM1, SEM2, when you add them together, it's really only one semester because you have the first half of SEM1 and the second, uh, first half of SEM2. Those are the times when you can really feasibly do a lot in Europe, okay? So to have a whole summer, three months where you're even like part-time and like a couple hours every week working on Europe is very, very beneficial, okay? So um, that's a long answer to your question, Gabriel, but I hope that makes sense to you. January to December is when you apply for starting in January, and you would do that at the end of SEM 1, which would be in October, November. And right now you're attending the briefing for starting at the big beginning of SEM 1, okay? Where you have to apply at the end of SEM 2, okay? So you do your application like it says here in March, you get approval from us in April, and then you officially start in August. But again, like I said, you may, uh, and talk to your advisor about this, try to do some of your research in the summertime. Does that make sense? 
Okay. I'll say one other part about this, which is that when you try to do work um, in doing uh, summer work, okay, it can be very simple things like reading background, doing a literature survey. So you just learn about the field. You don't have to contribute a lot to that. The con contribution part um, you can do in the semesters, but if you do your background reading during the summertime, it can take some time to digest, right? If you're presented with a new topic, it's very hard to apply it right away, right? So if you spend the summer reading up uh, research in that area, it can help you, you know, just sit with it for a while during the summer so that when you come back to school in August, you'll be ready to go. You know all the things that you need to know to start the project well. Other questions? Okay, uh, again, I'll give you 30 seconds to ask. And then after that, I will just say a couple other final things about how to find professors in your areas. So I'm very happy to take more questions. Just uh, go ahead and unmute. Okay, when unasked, is it a bio, is it advisable? advisable to embark on Europe without prior experience? Definitely yes, okay? Most Europe students have not done any type of research before starting. I mean, there are exceptions. Some of you who may have done H3 in computing or have some uh, um, internship, you may have had exposure to research, but by and large, Europe would be the first time. And in fact, that's even not the majority. A lot of people, when they do FYPs that are related to research, that is their first time, okay? So um, having no prior experience should not uh, be a, um, a barrier for you. You shouldn't worry about that. Other questions? Okay, uh, let me spend a, a, just a quick couple of uh, minutes here uh, telling you how I would go about doing um, a selection. Okay, I'm gonna start from a website that you know, but probably don't use very much, okay? Which is our website uh, for NUS Computing. So under research, okay, there are research centers and research areas, okay? So go here to research areas, right? So there's this link. Uh, you probably don't use it before, so I'll click here. And then it'll tell you computer science or DISA. So if you happen to be in DISA, then you would click here. Okay, I'm just going to assume that because most of our, uh, uh, our applicants are CS students, then I'll just click on CS. Okay. Um, and then what you should do is go through these tiles. Okay. Maybe pick like two or three of them um, that you think are interesting. Okay. Maybe like, okay, I, I, I like databases. So I'll open a tab on that. Okay, um, and uh, let me see, can I open a separate tab on that? And then maybe maybe algorithms, because I, I just took my algorithms course and I think that's really cool, okay? Then uh, what I can do is then scan these, okay? Look at these sub areas, okay? They're uh, not clickable, but then uh, you can go to the people page, okay? And then you, you, uh, you can see all the professors. Now, SLC is pretty big. There's over a hundred professors in SOC. So it's impossible to know what everyone is doing, okay? So this is sort of your gateway in. Um, this is uh, the part of the website where you can actually use it somewhat usefully, okay? If you Google, okay, like uh, for example, algorithms, uh, NUS SOC comp, okay? You will only get certain people like uh, Stephen Halim, some of our courses, et cetera, you might find. Uh, papers or like that, but it's not as comprehensive as doing it through the web page, okay? Because we worked very hard to make sure that the web page reflects everyone's interest, okay? So you can go through this and, and you know just click through everyone's page, okay? And then see what they're doing, okay? So this is Seth. He works on uh, um, wireless networking uh, resolution when there's conflict uh, in. Uh, sharing limited resources, optimization. This is closer to operations research, that type of thing. Uh, and then uh, Yijun, who just came in, he's a very new and very good professor. Uh, sorry about that. Um, he's interested in uh, dis distributed and parallel uh, graph algorithms. So quite different, but
but still very interesting. Like if you took a, the algorithms class and, and discrete math and you uh, learned about topological sort or other things like that, you want to how, how to do this on uh, multiple machines, then uh, you might talk to him, okay? Yeah, so uh, identify two or three areas, okay? Through uh, this uh, research, okay? Then when you click through those areas, uh, go through all of the professors, you know, one by one, short list, uh, again, at the end, maybe about um, five to 10 professors, and then send each person an email, okay? Just write a letter, um, look through the Europe uh, and FIP uh, forms, uh, the project in the project administration system, and then use that as a way of uh, uh, introducing yourself proposing or saying I'm interested in the project, okay? So I hope that helps you a little bit uh, about how to, to go about this thing, okay? Uh, again, I would say, uh, because it's worth eight MCs, it's not a small amount, uh, do your shopping, okay? Spend at least half a day. If you can spend the whole day making sure that you've sent out emails and then apply, uh, reply to anyone who, who uh, dialogues with you, all right? Okay, um, I'll stay around for any other questions, but uh, in fact, the briefing is over. So feel free to leave. Uh, if you have, again, any friends that weren't able to make it, let them know that they can find the recording later on. Okay, it will be on the Europe website. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thanks, Prof. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome.